Today I'm going to talk to you about disk redirection in VMware View Link Clone Desktop Pools. This video is going to cover the creation of a Link Clone Desktop Pool, and then we'll go into the hood on a desktop to look at the disk that it creates and give some thoughts on the disposable disk in particular. To get started, we'll need to make a new pool. So I'm going to add an automated pool, which means View Manager is going to make the VMs for me. For the user assignment, we're going to go with Dedicated which means the view manager is going to automatically assign a user to each desktop. This allows us to do a persistent disk. And I'm going to choose View Composer Link Clones. For the ID, I'm just going to use Video. For the pool settings, we're going to leave them as defaults. The Composer disk we'll want to talk about briefly. There's two Composer disks that you can redirect, the persistent disk which is also called the user disk, and the disposable disk, which is also called the non-persistent disk. Now, the persistent disk is where VMware View will redirect the user profiles to a separate disk. So typically in Windows 7, you got the C colon slash users folder. It's going to be redirected to a different drive. Make sure the drive letter that you choose is not already in use by the CD-ROM or map script or what, what have you. I'm just going to choose P for persistent disk. And then the disposable disk contains the page file and the temp folder. Uh, if you choose to redirect it, VMware View will actually uh, tell the guest operating system to redirect those two pieces to this disk. You can't choose a drive letter. It simply finds the first available drive letter and uses it. A caveat, make sure that the disk size that you choose is larger than the page file. And that's typically the size of the memory given the guest. By default, it's 4 gig, which should be plenty. We're going to turn off stop on provisioning errors just in case there, something goes wrong during the video. And we'll set a naming pattern of video and use the special N with the curly brackets around it. Denotes that's where the number for each desktop should be. As a tip, if you want that number to be a fixed length, you can colon it to fixed equals, we'll say 3. And that'll make it 001, 002, etc. Keeps the names a little nicer looking. And for the pool size, we'll just go with one desktop. For the image, I've already made one called Wall Network Video. That's the parent virtual machine that we're going to use for a replica. And here's the snapshot that I created. Now remember, link clones require a powered off VM with a snapshot. If you're going to do full or thick clones, you need a template. For the folder, I'm going to put it in the view parent folder and then VMware. Uh, the view manager will go ahead and make a subfolder with the name of the ID of the pool. For the cluster, I only have one. It's my home lab. And for the resource pool, we're just using the actual cluster itself, the root resource pool. Data stores brings in another interesting discussion on tiering. Essentially, if your storage doesn't do tiering for you, uh, examples would be EMC has fast, NetApp has flash cache, you know, Tintree is auto-tiered, uh, VM store, etc. You can go ahead and tier out using different data stores. In the lab, I've done this. Uh, so I have a pair of disks in RAID 1, I've got a single disk, and I've got an ONTAP simulator running on NFS. So you have the ability here to, instead of having all the disks ride on the same data store, you can split them out in case you want to tier. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to check the box to use a different data store for the OS and the persistent disk, which is also called the user disk. And I'm going to check this box, which will warn me to use high performance data stores for the replica. So if I check all these boxes here, you'll see this column use for. So my high performance RAID 1 will use a replica. For the local single disk data store, I'll put the OS disks. And for the ONTAP simulator, I'm going to put the persistent disk. Go next. <clears throat> Customization. Uh, just choose defaults for this particular video. And finish. All right, so we've got a pool called Video. It's an automated pool, which means View Manager is going to make the VMs for us. Link clones. And the user assignments, users are dedicated to each VM. I'm going to jump over to vCenter here. And you can see within view, it's made a folder called video. It's the name of the pool. And watching down here, we should see a replica get created. Takes just a second. 
So it's going to create a replica, and then based on that replica, it's going to start provisioning desktops in the video folder. Now what you're not going to see is the replica VM appear in this VM and templates view. If you want to see your replica VMs, you have to go over to the host and clusters view. So as you can see, that replica 96F, etc., was made. And then off of that, we have video 001 is our desktop. And this desktop, you can see the multiple storage tiers are mapped to it. So let's edit the VM and see if the disks are ready to be looked at. And they are. So the first disk is your actual OS disk. It's the difference between the, the parent replica and this particular desktop. So this is your Delta disk. The next disk is disposable. You can see it says disposable in the path. And it's sharing the data store with the OS disk. It's using that single disk data store. So right there, we've proven out that the disposable disk is coupled with the OS disk as far as data store selections go. Now, if you remember a disposable disk, we couldn't choose where to put that. So that's automatically chosen for you. The third disk here, it says user disk P. That's that persistent disk, and it's on the ONTAP NFS. So to note, it says user disk and also says the drive letter that we chose, which is P. And then finally, we've got this internal disk, which is also on the data store called single disk. The internal disk uh, does a couple different things. It has your quick prep configuration for the VM, and it has OS-related data, uh, which basically it's the password for the computer account in AD and a couple other things. The internal disk uh, is always made with a link clone, and it's to make sure when you recompose or do any operations on the VM um, that it remembers who it is as far as Active Directory is concerned. So that wraps up the link clone pool creation piece. Let's talk about that disposable disk. First off, there's a few caveats to use it. You have to be in view vSphere mode, which means your hosts are ESX4 or better. You have to make sure that the view agent 4.5 or better is installed on the parent. And you need to make sure that the disposable disk is larger than the page file so that it can be redirected. So at the end of the day, the positive side of using a disposable disk is that when the VM is powered off, the temp file and page file information is deleted. So it kind of forms a, a garbage collection process for you, which can be nice. However, because it shares the same data store as the OS disk, you're still consuming that storage space and there's no savings in IOPS, there's no performance gain from having it split out that I can really see. Um, so it's really up to you, and if you're never powering off the VMs, maybe you'll never get the benefit of the trash collection. So in conclusion, thank you for watching the Link Clone Desktop Pools Disk Redirection Explain video. I hope you've uh, gained some valuable insight and information on how that process works. Take care.